Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this clutch bag. It's a really lovely size. It opens and closes with a magnet. It's um, a one sheet wonder. It's been made with one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock decorated with some uh, designer series paper. Um, it was an idea that I picked up from a video I sure saw by Kelly Gettlefinger and last week I did a video to show you how to make this one which was also by Kelly and um, she goes by the name of Always Stamping um, and basically this is a box bag and this is a clutch bag okay one open one closed now when I did this video last week I showed you the first clutch bag I made and it's beautiful, really lovely. The only thing I wasn't happy about was how this got creased up down the sides. And I did say that if anybody was interested in seeing how this is made, although it is basically the same as this one, let me know and then I would work on sorting this problem out and then I would make the video. Lots of people love this bag and they want to see how, how it was done. So I investigated and I sorted out the problem. This is beautiful. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing today. First of all, the card pieces. Now I'm going to be using basic grey cardstock. This is 12 inches by 12 inches, which is 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres in metric. Card, the card pieces as for the DSP you need. Um, two pieces that are 4 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths inches, which is 12.5 by 15 centimetres, two pieces. You also need two pieces that measure 1 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths inches, which is 4.75 by 7.25 centimetres. And you also need a piece for the flap up here, and this measures three and a half inches by two and three quarter inches which is nine centimeters by seven centimeters you would also need a piece of basic grey cardstock which measures three and three quarter inches by three inches which is 9.5 by 8.5 centimeters and also one strip of uh, basic grey which is just for the little decoration that I've got going across there you will also need cardstock to make the flowers. I've already made mine ahead of time because these can be quite time consuming. So what I thought I would do is, first of all, I just go through and tell you what I've done, how I created these. I used the Botanical Builder Framelits. And this flower here, where it's got these flaps that come up, at the sides here. That was this die here. Okay, so I made one of those. And for the center, I used Whisper White cardstock and I used that one. And for the smaller flower, I made two of these. And again, this one has got the little bits that come up from the inside there. You can see that. I see it. Beautiful flowers these are. That's how that one worked. I didn't really show you properly, did I? There you go, you can see that. That's lovely. Okay, so I made two of those using that one. And then the centres I made in Whisper White with that little die and I just adhered them together with Tombow and the center there is from our uh, metal candy dots okay so that's the flowers first of all I'm going to make my basic bag 
so I'll move that out of the way because I need to bring up my scoreboard. Right, I'm going to just go over my card stock with my piece of waxed paper. This just helps my stylus slide more slide more comfortably over my cardstock. Right, now what we need to do here is on the first one we need to score at three inches and nine inches which is 7.5 centimeters by 22.5 centimeters. Okay, so that's my three and that's my nine. Turn the cardstock 90 degrees and you need to score this at 5 inches and 7 inches which is 12.75 by 17.25 centimetres. So that's 5 by 7. Now this is the change from making the box bag what we're going to do, we're going to do a little score line from that six inches and what I do is I bring my ruler in and I just line it up with one inch there it doesn't matter if it's a little bit over, a little bit less but if you go at the six inch mark which I didn't work out in metric oh my goodness um, if you're working in metric, can you just work out what's halfway between 12.75 and 17.5? 12.75 and 17.25. Um, that's got to be no, I can't. I'll put it on the screen anyway. At the six-inch mark or the halfway metric mark, just do a very gentle score line down. It doesn't have to be heavy just as long as there's a little boy, little, in fact, I should have told you, turn your sheet over. You need your crease going the opposite way. Okay, so do that that way. And then still on the opposite side, do it at the other end as well. Okay, it's not a full score line like all of these others are it's just a very gentle one it just helps the paper to bend slightly and that's all we want it to do so that's all we need to do on there so we'll do the same as what we did before and that is we're going to fold on all of our score lines I'm going the wrong way now and as always make sure that your corners line up to the edge of your paper If you've already, if you made the bag that I showed you last week, this is going to be quite easy for you. If it's you, we talk about index fingers at this point. Now your left index finger goes under this score line here. You've got the narrow part here. Okay. Oh, it's showing up quite well on the screen, isn't it? Um, so it's this little one here. Left index finger there right index finger at the crease there and what you need is for that to that fold there to come and line up with that fold there and if you keep these fingers to keep that piece out of the way keep it down and then just bring that over to line up and then you can turn it around make sure you keep it lined up and then use your bone folder to get your crease really nice and firm and I put my point into my corner there to bring down just make sure that that stays nice now it's the other hand Le uh, right index finger 
behind, left index finger into the point and those fingers holding your paper there. And then you can bring that down quite easily to line up with there. Put a fold into that, then you can turn it around, fold it all down nicely and then with your bone folder crease that one. Now we need to do the other side. Left index finger, right index finger, hold that paper down and then oops. Do as I say, <laughs> don't do as I don't do as I do. I wasn't concentrating on that one, got it in the wrong place. Right, so that's needs to be nicely firmed down. And then we want the last one. If you find that I'm going a bit too fast on this one, um, maybe you can go back to the box bag and have a look on that one where I did take it a lot more slower than this. But I am very aware that my videos can take quite some time. Right, so that one's in. Smooth that down. Okay, so now with your folds like that, your bag should come up like this. And you will notice as you're holding there, you've got your little crease there. And if you just give that a gentle push, that will go in very slightly. And the same that side, that will go in. Okay, that's all you need to do. Don't push it right the way in. It just needs to go that little fraction. Okay. From the top there can you see how much I'm just doing that that's all it needs right so now we're going to glue our box together so the first one we're going to glue this bit that I think looks like half a house on all four corners Okay, go close to the edge but not over the edge. Okay, down by the score line, on the edge, on the edge, and by the score line again, and a little bit in the centre. And then this one, down by the score line, edge, edge, score line, a little bit in the centre. Oh, I thought I touched it there. Down by the score line, by the edge, by the edge, score line a little bit in the centre. And then just fold those two pieces over like that and smooth it down with your bone folder to make sure that the glue gets spread around. Okay, so that's all nicely done. So then, if you bring these two up, you've got your box coming together really nicely. Okay, and with that little bit going in slightly, you can see how this is going to be coming over. Alright, so the next bit we're going to do is we're going to put glue on these triangles here so that we can adhere it at the back here. So, Tombow again. You can use, um, no, I didn't recommend Snail, did I? You can use Fast Fuse for this, and I imagine tearing tape would be okay as well. Now, because this is going to be coming up and gluing like that, it's okay if you go over the edge on this diagonal score line. That's the only bit. Don't come up any higher than that, because you'll find that when that comes up, you'll have glue peeping out and that's what you don't want. Okay, so you can go up to the score line and over that one. Just up to the uh, score line and then up to the edge. A little bit in the middle. This one, 
up to the score line, down the score line and over the score line, and then down by the edge, a little bit in the middle. Down by the score line, along the score line and over the score line, and then down the edge, a little bit in the middle. Now again we're going to bring our box together and what we're going to do is we're going to lay it down and we're going to put our bone folder and smooth that against this back here and here and on this side and that side. Okay, so I've got it laying down. I can't do this standing up because I need to rest it on the table to be able to put some pressure on it. Okay, so once you're happy, that is all adhered down really nicely. As I say, do as I say, don't do as I do, because I've got glue leaking out at the top there. But that's okay, I can go over that once it's dry with my adhesive eraser. Okay, so now because we don't squeeze that too tight, we're just pushing it in a little bit, this is going to go over and stay nicely rounded. Okay, what you can do is just very very gently encourage it to go backwards. Don't actually fold it, don't create any creases, but just very slightly. It's a bit like running your pencil um, when you've got flowers and you're trying to curl them. You run your pencil gently over it. It's a bit like that, but unless you've got a very long pencil, that really isn't going to happen. But this is what makes it keep that shape. Okay, so it's going to be like that and that. So let's do our decorating. Not that one for the time being. We're going to use these. If you're using a directional pattern, do be careful. Um, I did it with the um, box bag. I had the writing design on that one. But it was okay. I didn't make any mistakes. Not that any of us would have been surprised if I had. <laughs> right, here we go. There's that one. No right or wrong way with this one. Um, this design is from the Neutrals Designer Series Paper Stack. There are two colours in there where this flower design is actually on a white background. And that's basic grey and soft suede. All the others it's it would be like basic grey background with white flowers which I think makes a nice change so that it does give us the option. It's why I chose the basic grey this time because I wanted the white background. With the, um, to seal the bag, you can use Velcro dots. I'll explain that a bit when we get to that stage. Right, now this one here, what we're going to do is, if you put your paper on there, line it up where it's going to be going, and then give that a little bit of a push so that it forms the same fold that it's got here. It won't be a fold that you can see, but it will just give you a little bit of a bend. 
Let me see if I can bring that up to the camera to show you. There's no actual fold there, but you can see the bend. And that's just going to help this piece of paper sit comfortably in that dip. Okay, so let's have a go. Okay, so stick the dip in there first, so everything else goes around it. Okay. So as that bends, this paper is going to give with it. Let's do the other one. Line it up where you're going to be adhering it and then just give it a little bit of a push where you want it to go. And again, it's got the bend there but no actual crease. But maybe there's a little bit of a crease there at the top, but that's okay. It's almost invisible. Now, I don't know if that's one of those sayings that you can't say, like you can't say it's quite unique. It's either unique or it isn't unique. Maybe you can't say it's almost visible. It's either invisible or it isn't. But you know what I mean. Right, there we go. So that goes in and Get this bit stuck down first and everything else around it. Okay. Right, so that's that bit. We can come back and do that decorating next, um, later rather. If we do this bit next and then I can explain about the Velcro dots versus the um, magnets. Now to cut these I'm going to use layering oval dies, these ones here, and for the DSP I'm using die number seven, straight cut number seven, and this is number eight for the scallop. It's the largest scallop die there is, and in case you haven't seen my videos before, these layering dies, they actually layer inside each other, and these do too, but they have to be stored like this because they will touch each other if they were on top of each other. Okay, so to count the sizes, I always do um, the smaller the die, the smaller the number. So I start off with the smallest die here. So that's number one, that's number two, number three, number four and so on. So this is number seven. Okay. And I have to say these layering dies are fabulous. They layer so close to each other. Where's my bag gone? As you can see, that is really absolutely superb. I love them, I really do. So let's get my big shot up. So that's the basic grey with the scallop die and this is the straight cut die. This time make sure I get my plates on straight. Okay, 
so that's a scallop not too much waste there and this is the DSP look how this layers look how close that is, isn't that lovely? beautiful, I love it right, let's put this away that's all we need is for I had to use that for my flowers but um, that's alright um, I did that because it takes too long to do now I'm going to use my scoreboard for this again and basically what I want to do is half and half now I am just eyeballing this um, I think when you put this straight, sort of jam brown straight, what I try and do, I try and decide which two I think are at the top. I don't think there's a, although I don't know, this time it does look, no it doesn't. I think, to me, there's two bobbles there that are at the top. So what I do is I move them along very slightly so that each bobble touches one of these lines here. Be handy if you could see that, wouldn't it? Let's move this down a bit. Let's try that again. Right, just line this up as best you can up here. I, whoops, I'm just eyeballing it. But for me, it always looks like for these two bobbles, that looks like the top to me. I would have expected to see one as a top, but it's two. So what I do with those two bobbles, I move them so that each one is against an upright so that that gives me a gap for my stylus to go in between. If this isn't perfectly in the centre, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'll show you why. Okay, so I'm going to go the plunge there. Okay, so that's gone right in between two. But as I've come down, it's gone to the centre of just one of them which makes me think by the time I fold this in half that's going to be wrong so we'll see and again put this one up and do this in half if you feel that you need to move it slightly so that it goes your stylus can go in the centre go for it Okay, now let's see what I've managed to do here. Hopefully when I fold them in half they will be almost in half. Right, now that one, crikey, look how good that is. That is almost perfection. How good was this one? Now that's what I normally do. Can you... how out I am there I think you can this end's not too bad but this end is really quite out but that's okay, no worries um, when this goes over here it really isn't going to matter what's what this is the only problem by the time that gets on there it's got to be halfway now I want this to be in two parts on here I don't want to just put it over like that and glue it let me show you what I've done here okay so there's a plain crumb cake cardstock across there and I want to have plain basic grey cardstock across the top so what I do is I bring my trimmer in And on this one, I just line this up. In fact, this is one of the very rare times I will say it's okay to use a bone folder on a DSP because DSP will split if you do too much um, bone folding on it. But it's okay here because we're going to cut it off anyway. 
Now on your trimmer you've that is your cutting um, channel and then right here is another little channel which is where this bit actually fits in here so what I do is I line this up halfway between that line there I only want to take a slither off okay so it's halfway between that channel and that channel there so put it halfway on this bit here I'm trying to think of a decent name for it but I can't so I'm going to hold that really steady make sure I keep that straight and then I'm going to fold that down I might have to move my fingers out the way didn't have this travel off camera in fact, I might just use the post-it note to hold it down. Right, okay. No, I think I've got it. No, I'm not brave enough. I'm going to put a post-it note to hold it. Right, that's in place. Now I'm going to put that. Right, now I'm happy. Now that that's in place, now I'm going to press onto my uh, plastic bit here to make sure it doesn't move. And now I'm slicing that off. And this is what I've taken off. Okay, very, very narrow bit. And if I open it up, that's how much has come off. Okay, so that's a thin slither. And that's what it's like open. So what I've got now is two pieces like this and I'm going to adhere these on either side of this. Just going to see if one looks better on the other. I don't think so. If by the time I get them on, if I think one doesn't look quite so nice, that's the one that I'm going to put on the back of my bag. You may also notice that on this particular clutch bag, I don't decorate the back of it. I normally do, but because this is a, it's a clutch bag and it's obviously got a back and a front, um, I'm not going to do the back of it. This bit. There we go. I don't think one side looks. Mm, yeah, this is a better side. So that's the one I'm going to put at the front. So I'm going to put glue on the back one. I don't think there's a better front or back. No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that where I think to be halfway and then I'm just going to bring my bag closed so that I know one that it's about halfway and two that this has all been lined up. This will come apart slightly. I haven't been able to find any way that that will stay closed. Right, now what I do is I push my thumb inside there so I can grab hold of this to make sure that I'm holding it, it doesn't move, and then lift that up out of the way. And give this a squeeze to make sure that the glue grips. So that's fine. What I need to do now are the magnets and these are the ones that I have. They are from Basic Grey. It's these ones. Um, these are the two sizes I have and I'm using the smaller ones. 
Now what I find with um, magnets, because these really are super strong, um, I put a little piece of cardstock over them, um, like these. They've both got some crumb cake over them. It helps to reduce how tough they are. To It helps to protect, make sure that it's not, it doesn't tear cardstock or anything like that. Okay, so what you need to do is you need whatever size your magnets are, you need to be able to punch out two circles. This is these are three eighths inches. Unfortunately, um, the fact that it's got a blue dot on it tells me that it has been retired. It is stamping up punch, but it's retired. Um, so when you buy your magnets, you, you may want to think about what size um, punches you've got or not worry about doing this bit. Um, also, I find it a really difficult job trying to get that white off of the magnet. So I ignore it, I just glue straight over it. Okay, so you need one plus and one minus. So that's a plus. Okay, so that's a minus. I adhere my dots. Okay, so that's that one. So that's those two done. So then what I do, oops, right, now which way do I want these? Those two have got to go together. Okay, so what I've got now is I have my two magnets and I've got the cardstock on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to put some more glue on here handy having metal um, tweezers. I'm going to put some more glue on here and I'm going to stick it on the flap. You will find that uh, Tombow is excellent for this. Uh, I just put a little bit in the centre because that little bit will spread out. Now yeah, that's it. Oh, let go. That's it. All right. So there's that. Then I need some glue onto this one. Not too much. And then line the bag up properly again, and then close it down. Okay. You just need that to hold for a little while. Now I wonder if I can, as I'm doing a video, that's not going to reach, is it? Um, I don't want to close my bag too much. I like the shape of this. I like that it's not bending too much. And I certainly don't want to spoil that. I'll put my finger in there and try and put a bit of pressure to it, just long enough for it to hold. Right, keep fingers crossed. A quick note about the Velcro dots, much much easier than using this. All you need is you get the Velcro dot that's got the, um, what I call the hooky bits on it like that. They're self-adhesive and then you get one that's got the fluffy bit on it like that and they just attach together like that. So much easier than fiddling with magnets. But I wanted to show you how to do those. 
So let me very quickly just decorate my bag and then that is it, we're done. So I have my strip of basic grey cardstock here. I'm just going to put a little bit of Tombow on here, not too much. And this should be a bit longer than that. I don't think I told you about this, did I, as a piece of cardstock you needed. Um, mine's a quarter of an inch wide. You could do three-eighths of an inch wide, uh, which is more what I've got on this one. That's three-eighths, okay, if you prefer the wider one. And this is about, well, I don't know, but it's definitely longer than my bag. But that's okay because I'm quite happy cutting the extra bit off. Just make sure that's straight. Yep. In fact, that's not that much too long. There we go, so that's fine. I don't put anything on here um, to indicate that that's a magnet, but I'm sure people will be able to work that out for themselves. And then for my flowers, I just put Tombow on the base. And again, like the um, flowers that I use when I do the flower shop, I don't fluff the petals up until this is very dry. Okay, and I'm just eyeballing this to make sure it's straight. And then just put these two on at different angles. I do try not to put those two on at the same same direction. Now there we go, there's today's clutch bag. Isn't it absolutely super? Um, let me bring my other one in. Oh, let me just see if I can open up my bag. I'm just going to do this with my paper piercer to start off with. Okay, so there's our um, cardstock covering on it. Um, and it just closes beautifully. I'm just so pleased with this project. I love it. Um, I hope you like it too and I hope you decide to give it a try. Many thanks for watching my video today. If you have any questions please leave a comment in the box below or email me at jambi at jambi cards and I'll be happy to help you. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here, apart from the magnets obviously, um, if you click on the 24-7 link that you'll find in the box below the video, um, you'll see the 24-7 link for my Stamping Up shop. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video, which is normally every Wednesday and every Sunday. Um, finally, I will be putting the measurements and the products, the details on the screen. Um, if you're watching on a device where you can't see those, again, click on the in the box below and all the details will be down there for you. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.